What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I am the Kilted Cajun, and I decided to sit my little ass down and watch the first episode of Andor. Uh, the first three episodes have released on Disney Plus, and I'm going to watch the next two episodes. Of course, I have to take care of that before Friday night tights because otherwise, I'm it's gonna get spoiled and discussed and everything. So I have two more episodes to watch, but I wanted to make a little quick video talking about the first episode. Um, all in all, in general, I like it. Um, I'm so happy to say that about Star Wars. I haven't heard anything good about much. Uh, as a little disclaimer, I did not watch Rogue One. I've heard great things. I've heard it's you know one of the better Disney Star Wars uh, products, but I didn't watch it. So I'm coming into this pretty much blind, I guess. I have no idea who Cassian Andor is, but hopefully we'll see. Uh, I think it's, I don't think that's a bad thing because at least Disney can show me who Cassian Andor is. Uh, I'm going to judge it based on that uh, to see how good of a job they do um, telling and Cassian's story and how he got to where he was in Rogue One. Um I, don't, I think that's a pretty good way to look at it. You know, not everybody has seen Rogue One. You know, I know most Star Wars fans have. I guess maybe I'm not a Star Wars fan. No, I'm a Star Wars fan. Bite me. Um, um, all in all, uh, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Uh, the pacing was... It's not the fastest pacing in the world. Uh, but I don't mind that. I enjoyed the hell out of Dune. Out of Denis Villeneuve's Dune. It was a very slow burn movie and i absolutely loved it all two hours and 45 minutes but back to andor yeah uh it i think it did a decent enough job pulling you in with the first episode giving you a little bit of mystery um a tiny bit of backstory and you wanting to ask questions what who is he who what is his character um and yeah i i must admit i enjoyed it so off we go. Uh, a little bit of discussion. The way the movie... Uh, three to, uh, spoilers if you haven't watched it. Um, three, two, one. We're going to move on. If you haven't clicked away, it's on you. So the way it starts off... Uh, apparently there's the Morlani system. There's two different planets that it takes place on. Morlano 1 is where it starts. Uh, Cassian apparently calls his home on Ferrix, but... Uh, Opening scene, Morlana 1, Cassian is walking down what apparently is the walkway from the ship port, ship dock, into the main part of the city. He ends up going through what I guess would be considered the red light district, goes to a brothel, and you come to find out he's looking for his sister. Well, in the process, he looks at a couple of guards the wrong way, you know, he, the guards, these little thug uppity guards have an attitude. They don't like him just by the way he looks or how the mistress of the brothel talks to him first instead of them. So naturally, the foreshadowing is so very, very obvious. Once Cassian leaves there, they go after him and question him and try to muscle him around and use, his, uh, use their power as the security for the the planet or the city that they're in of course naturally it goes wrong he tricks them put hits a uh, head butts one in the face punches him out the dude ends up falling on the ground and dying his thug buddy who was doing all most of the talking turns into straight up coward no not really coward but trying to pretty much pleading for his life because he knows exactly how it's going to go and this one part in the movie in the movie this one part in the episode actually impressed me because cassian did exactly what someone in his position is supposed to do he shot the guy in the face because the guard he knew because his friend was dead and he saw cassian's uh cassian's face that his his life was limited he was you know on borrowed time right then and there so he starts pleading and trying to say one thing or another and Cassian just looks at him and shoots him dead in the face. So I'm impressed Disney decided to do that. 
Was, eh. But then again, the first episode of The Mandalorian was eh, pretty pretty violent and brutal. So maybe I'm just getting my hopes up. We back up to, we cut over to Ferrix and this little droid going through the streets. Uh, pretty much Wally 2.0 from what I could tell is going through the streets in the CGI pig dogs are, I don't know. They look out of place. They're not terrible. It's not as bad as She-Hulk, for God's sake, but that's not saying much. Um, they look okay, but they still look a little out of place. The cliche, one of the dogs takes it, starts to take a leak on the droid, and the droid shocks him, but whatever. The reason why I call it Wally 2.0 is because it's just roaming through the town, and it cuts to a scene where he's going into a junkyard to what looks like Wally's house from the movie. But it ends up being the place that Cassian hangs out at. Um, convinces the droid to lie. So right away, you know that Cassian Andor is doing things he's not supposed to do. You know, what is he doing? Why is he doing it? Is he working for someone? Is he really looking for his sister? So some interesting little things. You get a little flashback to his youth. And you get flashbacks throughout the episode uh, back to his youth uh, where it's... I'm assuming him and his sister in a village, uh, what could, the equivalent of a third world, third world village on the side of a river, and they see a starship crash land. Later on in the other flashbacks, the kids, or at least the adolescents of the village, tribe, whatever, they're getting all dolled up to go on what can what I can only assume because again I've only watched the first episode I can only assume they're going to go and loot the loot the ship and they're all going along at the end of the episode Cassian leaves his sister behind so perhaps that is the last time but that wouldn't make too much sense if that's the last time he sees his sister and he's been looking for her this entire time we'll wait and see in episode two and three I'll have those I'm going to watch them tomorrow or when I I don't know when this is going to be released anyway so. We get flashbacks back and forth. We go back to Morlana 1 and the dead guards have been discovered. And you have the young, um, I don't know what the, the young security guy who is obviously straight off the bat, the way he's standing, the comparison between the young one and the old guy, uh, the, old, the older guy who is obviously in charge of all of it because he's got to go make a report to the Empire and just wants to make it brief as possible and get the Empire out of there as fast as possible. He's very relaxed. His uniform's disheveled and everything. And the younger one, he's like standing up straight and just prim and proper and his uniform's all nice and dolled up and everything. He's reporting on the murders and the older one is like starts talking about how it's a shame that these two, uh, the two guards past and explains that the prim and proper young guy has to come up with a fake story of how they died because they were seen in a brothel that they're not supposed to have drinking i guess a certain kind of alcohol that they're not supposed to be able to afford in a high-priced brothel that they're not supposed to be afford able to afford and just all these things that look really really bad on the report and of course the the older the guy the older man in charge he figures out pretty much exactly what happened they decided to pick a fight with the wrong person and it caught up with him so he's familiar but of course the young one being you know he's got something to prove so he wants to he he uh he makes the decision to push forth an investigation to try and figure out what happened because those guards were murdered and even though, you know, while they were murdered, they did, they definitely brought it upon themselves by messing with someone that they shouldn't have. So all that goes back and forth and pretty much, yeah, the guy wants to make a name for himself. A few things happen. Um, it's, I guess, really not much to talk about. It doesn't, the episode doesn't really go into a lot of detail. There's not a lot of action. Not, you, you think not a lot happens, but there's hints here and there uh, that um, Cassian Andor owes people, owes a lot of people money. He runs into one of them on the street, but manages to talk his way out of it. So there's hints that he's able to, he's a fast talker. Uh, 
I don't know if I don't exactly know who the woman is, but I believe Cassian calls her Biggs, which obviously a throwback to the I don't know if it's a throwback or if she's related to him or if maybe it's just a common name. Again, I never watched Rogue One, so maybe people already know about that in Rogue One. It's shown that there is some sort of underground backroom communications. Cassian has something he wants to sell, so there's obviously a black market. Uh, her boyfriend or fiance or whatever, whatever relationship, I guess the boyfriend. I don't know if he thinks there's something going on between Biggs and Cassian or or what he thinks their relationship is maybe. So he tries to follow her and she ends up losing him. So all these different things happen. And towards the end of it, Cassian is going to do something on the ship that he took from Ferrix to Morlano one. And at the shipyard, the guy in charge of the ships tell him, you know, don't do it again. You're not, no more favors, this, that, and the other. It's, it'll be interesting. I do. I am interested to see where the story goes. I'm genuinely interested. I'm not sure if it's going to be a benefit, uh, if it's going to be to my benefit or my detriment that I did not see Rogue One. I'm hoping it's more beneficial, uh, depending on how Disney and Lucasfilms does the story, how well the pacing is. Uh, I have to admit that so far I'm hooked. I uh, will look forward to the next two episodes. And after that, I'm definitely going to be talking about it. I'm definitely going to be reviewing it. Maybe this will be, maybe this will be something pleasant to cleanse my palate every week after She-Hulk, because She-Hulk's a nightmare, and I believe She-Hulk comes out later on tonight. And I got to review that because I I finished what I started. So at least the fact that I'm doing this first this first review of Andor episode one, I'm going to follow it through all the way to the end. I don't need a fast-paced, action-packed Star Wars. I'm interested in a good story. So far, what they've told, so far it's a good story. All 45 minutes of it, or 40 minutes of it. How do you call that a good story? I'll watch the next two episodes very shortly, very soon. Put out a review on those. I hope to see you on the, on that one. Let me know what you think about the first episode of Andor. If you've watched the, if you've watched the other two, hey... Please don't spoil it. I'm going to watch those tomorrow. I'm going to have to stay off the internet. Yeah. Anyway, that's not going to happen. So anyway, let me know what you thought. If you like what I do, if you like what I talk about, if you like hearing me run my mouth, leave a like, leave us, you know, hit me with a subscribe, share it with your friends, make fun of me in the comments. Hope to see you on the next one and y'all have a good one.